What's going on guys, T2RX6 here back for another Transformers review and today we're taking a look at the Toys R Us version of Masterpiece Optimus Prime. And uh, I thought we'd take a quick look at the box before we pull them on out. This is a really nice looking display box, shows everything you get in it. Um, really big which makes shipping it to people kind of a problem because the US loves to charge over extra money when it's over 12 inches. And uh, this guy definitely is over 12 inches there. Um, bio on the back, you can pause here if you want to read it. There's also going to be pictures at the end. Um, so that's enough of the box. Let's actually get this guy open. Alright, so I've got Prime out of his package. But first I figured we might as well talk about some of his accessories. He does, of course, come with the axe. Um, I'll show you that, how it works after... Um, I'm not sure if there's any differences versus the Takara version. Um, unfortunately, my Takara version axe and uh, roller are upstairs, uh, stored away. And I just couldn't go get them real easy, so I don't have them for this review. They do have the guns still. Um, you can tell the difference by the shade of gray that the trigger is. Um, both still, of course, it flips out. Now, I actually find the paintwork on the US version actually a bit cleaner than my Takara version, uh, the edges. When I also close the Takara version, it just makes a tiny little click. This one here, you kind of get it the same, and it doesn't want to hold. And you really have to push it, and there's a pretty substantial click there. You can hear it again. And then it holds in place. So there are at least some differences there. Next, we've got the spike figures, and let me hold him by his arm here, because you'll see that there's actually, it may not show up on camera very well, but there is definitely a shade difference um, on the boots. Almost not noticeable, but the uh, US version's a little bit brighter, and he's actually got a little bit darker brown hair. His face actually looks like it might be better detailed, actually on this version, whereas my Takara one kind of looks like mush. His belt is actually painted a lot better too. Um, so yeah, the US version wins again. And I wanted to show the matrices here. Matrixes, I don't know what you call them. This is the Takara version and this is the US version. Um, I think the paintwork on the Takara version is better. Um, this one seems a little bit more spotty on places um, but yeah I mean same thing they're both made out of die cast I thought this one might have been made out of plastic when I first saw it but it's just that the paint work is a lot more spotty on this one whereas this is a little bit nicer paint so let's talk roller here and I've got roller out versus the Japanese version this roller is actually blue um, the Japanese one is silver painted in the same silver as this trailer pretty nice interpretation of roller you can of course take your spikes and sit them inside roller if you so choose you can actually fall right through roller there there we go sit them in roller which is pretty nice it's cool that they put that in um, Roller himself does have sort of a transformation, a little bit, I guess. Um, you kind of take this back, you flip this around, and now mine doesn't really sit very good on there. You can see that it's kind of uneven. You can get it all the way down, but it does want to pop out of this back joint here. But you can open that up, and you flip this little light bar on around, and you close it back up again, and you've got a... Uh, thing for roller. Sorry about that guys, my cat just came in and knocked over the uh, light. So now once you have this thing out here, you can actually take your trailer and it's designed so you can take a little uh, peg system here and it just kind of slips on over the connection on roller here and then you can have roller pulling your masterpiece trailer. So, we might as well actually get to the trailer before we move to Prime. And the trailer is more different than 
I've seen, granted I haven't watched a whole bunch of reviews, but most just tend to gloss over the trailer. And I don't think that's worth doing. So here's your trailer. You still, of course, have the gimmick where this thing comes out and folds out on its own for the base mode. Um, we still have, of course, the opening back doors and the ramp. Now, you may notice already that there's a difference, that these doors on the inside are completely unpainted. Um, we'll get to that. But you still have... whoops. Closing the doors without putting the ramp back. But you still have that. Now, the trailers, if you're concerned about being able to differentiate them from the outside, are actually different from the outside here. Is it going to show up on camera? That's a good question. But they are not going to show up different on camera. But again, the silver paint that's used on the Takara version is different than the silver paint used on the Hasbro version. You might be able to see it. It's a little bit darker on the ha uh, Takara version. The Hasbro is a little bit brighter. Um, that's the difference. Uh, it's really noticeable if you put them down somewhere and you kind of look at them a little bit more from a distance that this one definitely is shaded differently than the uh, Hasbro version. So there are slight differences. It's a shame that it's going to be pretty well impossible to try to convey that on camera here. Um, overall, I think the darker one looks a little bit nicer because just the way you can see all the rivets and stuff on it a little bit easier. Uh, you can see it on the uh, Hasbro version, but it just feels like this one feels more realistic in a sense. Now, when you opened the Takara version here to put it in his base mode, granted I have some Reaper labels in here, but this whole interior was painted silver. Um, except for the claw parts on the uh, repair bay piece. When you open up the US version, which is significantly harder to do it seems for me. Let me pull them off the desk here. There we go. All of this detail is unpainted in the Hasbro release. It's not bad, it's just, you know, obviously more paint went into this. This is great though if you are like me and you're going to be trying to paint some of these interior details, which is probably ultimately going to make this one look nicer than the Takara version. You can also see some extra paint work went in around like these little stations where you can get Spike to sit just to give it a little bit better detailing, uh, which I think is pretty nice. You can also see the blue color differences between the repair bay bots. But just like normal, it does telescope up. Does have a good full range of motion on there. You can of course open the canopy to fit spike on in there. That's all the same. You also do have the fact that these flaps can open. I hate opening these flaps. I don't do it on my Takara version. They're very difficult. I can't really get that past there. I don't want to force it, but you can open it on up and that'll allow the Teletran unit to stick through the top. The repair bay unit. I don't think it... I had some uh, speculation on whether that was actually Teletran or not. <laughs> Look, my Autobot symbol has some smudges and stuff on it. Oh well. Anyway, yeah, there was debates if that was the Teletran unit or not, and uh, I don't know. It's just referred to as his battle platform, I believe. I thought somewhere, though, it was referred to as Teletran before. So, let's get on to the main show here. And that would be Optimus himself. Now, I have him open. Whoops, losing the light again. I have him open so I can put his matrix back in. Um, it's hard to get the matrix out of here. 
this one here versus my Takara version, that matrix flap opens really easy. My Takara version does not. Let's actually bring out the Takara version. We should probably close these up too, I suppose. You also notice mine has a little bit of a funky chest. There's something wrong about how one of the two sides, I think it's the our left side, his right side, sitting funny. Something doesn't seem right and it's not closing properly. So he does have that big gap in his chest and from my understanding he this is this is a pretty common problem with these uh, Toys R Us MP tents. So here's the Takara version all done. Now remember I did paint these lights on here so on the Takara version they are just unpainted plastic. The Hasbro version does a really nice job actually painting that. Now, one thing that I can't stand about the Takara version that was fixed in the Hasbro version is the eyes. I mean, just giving that paint to the eyes makes him look like he's gone from being completely lifeless to, you know, actually being a functional active bot. That paint goes a really long way on making this figure better. In terms of other differences, um, for whatever reason, it's they they kind of look the same when the certain light hits them. But it always appears to me that this yellow on the American release, it's like a gold metallic yellow. It seems a little bit brighter than the Takara version, but oftentimes it just ends up looking the same. So. Maybe it's just me. The plastic used on these two, uh, I feel like Takara used the uh, darker gray, which I'm a bigger fan of. It looks less cheap than the lighter gray. Um, some extra repro labels have been applied here to make this look nicer. Probably will end up doing the same for this guy. Um, I really do like what the repro labels do. And then you've obviously got the blue. I like that none of the chrome was sacrificed or anything like that. I was uh, pleasantly surprised considering how much cheaper he is than the Japanese version. You can take his gun still and put it in this back compartment and close it on up. Um, I've heard problems with transforming him into robot mode when you have the gun in there. I haven't tried, or I'm sorry, vehicle mode when you have the gun in there. I haven't tried it yet. And of course, gun flips out, hands open up, pointer finger falls off because it is just a very small inner connection there. Um, it's very easy to get this to fall off. If you're careful, it won't fall off, but it is easy to accidentally have it happen. So, you can plug his gun on in, and he holds it just perfectly. Now, I'm not going to do the load of size comparisons that I did when I reviewed this guy. If you want to see how he compares to pretty much every Prime I own, go ahead and check out the MP10 review I've got up. Uh, I will do some, though, here. In terms of articulation, he's great, 360, um, in and out, uh, kind of can get this sideways motion just due to the transformation. I like to keep these connector joints in to give them a little bit tighter of a look, but it is nice to have them so you can get a little bit of mobility in his arms. He's not going to be doing any gymnastics or anything, but, you know, it's pretty good articulation. Um, bicep swivel, the elbow. Wrist rotates, waist, head is not on a ball joint, it's actually on an up and down here, but then that is on its own swivel, and you have the transformation joint here, which does give him plenty of options for posability for his head. I said waist, um, the ratcheted hips, um, again, looks like a ball joint, but it's not, it's just a swivel, and a swivel, totally effective. Um, you do have the upper thigh rotation, the knee rotation, the actual joint, and then the ankle tilt, plus all the toe 
stuff that you're going to have to mess with with this guy if you want him to stay in a position. Um, that is probably my gripe about both versions of MP10 is they do like to wiggle around a lot and you have to kind of take your hands down here and push his feet down when you got him in the position to make sure that he has a good stance and he's not going to go anywhere. But he is a great toy. Totally worth the hundred dollars if you uh, are looking for one. It's a shame that he's hard to come by though. I just wish his chest would be different. That really bugs me on mine. I may have to take mine back to Toys R Us and hope that I can find another one. I don't know. We'll see. They are scarce. Um, yeah, so for size comparisons here, I figured I would bring out a couple more things. Some of these are just repeats from when I did the MPA 10 review. But here we've got Masterpiece Grimlock here. And you can see he is a little bit taller than Grimlock, which stinks because Grimlock should be bigger than him. But whatever, it's close enough. I've got Rodimus. This is the Takara version. Uh, just real quick, and then we'll put him away. Here's the MP01 for size comparison. Much bigger, much heavier, but. I don't know, there's a big camp of people who really love MP01. I think MP10 just makes them very obsolete feeling. Here is the iGear Ratchet. And we'd be remiss if we didn't have MP12 Sideswipe. The Art Feather Bumblebee. And then my current quote unquote masterpiece cliff jumper that I use on my shelf is Alternity Cliff Jumper. Sorry, his door chest thing wasn't staying closed properly. I hope someone makes a masterpiece style cliff jumper, either Hasbro or some third party company. But uh, for now, my alternative is the best I've got. So that's what you get really for size comparison. So to transform this guy into vehicle mode, first we're going to take his gun and store it away. And I just realized I've given him an actual MP10's gun and not his own. So we're going to take that and we're going to store it away. And we're going to see if we actually have problems, uh, as people have been saying, getting him into vehicle mode with the gun in here. Now what we're going to do, we'll start just by opening up his chest here. And just open up the matrix cavity. Just because now it just seems like the easiest time to do it. I think we are going to have problems because I see this likes to move a lot. Anyway, so what we're going to do, uh, I like to do his legs, to be honest. Uh, get that situated. So you're going to take these little black pieces here. Black, gray. Apparently I don't know colors today, I'm sorry. <laughs> take them, push them in. And then that's going to allow you to fold his legs on in like this. Take these pieces, kind of fold them open. That's going to connect together like this. Forming his legs. You can then close up his feet here. And they do have a little bit of a slide to them where they come out. And you'll peg them together like that. You can also take this little flap and just bring these down here. And we'll leave the gas cans where they are while the air brake, I think they're air brake canisters, not fuel tanks. I don't know. I'm not a truck expert. But we'll leave them like that. Take your Optimus and rotate them at the waist like this. And then we'll start taking this apart like so. Now, what you're going to do is take this and fold it all the way back so that the like spine piece plugs into here and then you plug in the back like so. Once you have this, just take this down, watch these chromed out pieces. These have really, are very uh, susceptible to being 
chipped up. If you look at my Dakar one, there's actually some black chips in this, this paint here. Probably gonna have to touch it up at some point, but yeah, be careful with that. Just something to be aware of. Open up these panels like that and flip this on around. If you did it right, all this stuff should kind of line up with this tab down here on his <coughs> grill, his fake grill. So we'll do it again for the other side here. Flip this, flip these open. And this is the first time that I'm putting this particular one into his vehicle mode. Take this. Oh, that was nice and easy. Uh, my Takara one, you have to fight with these to the point that uh, I think I've got a couple little stress marks here. This one is great. I love how easy that one is. Take that and rotate his fist on in. Close it on up. Do the same for this side. No, oh, well, I don't have to worry about him breaking, that's for sure. <laughs> Rotate that up and closed. We got that done. And then what you can do, take this uh, matrix part and rotate it on down. It should fit just like this at the bottom uh, pretty tightly. You then rotate his head. Like so. Take his arms. And we just kind of fold them on up. Put this back. And then fold his arms on in to his truck mode. Uh, this is probably the hardest part of the MP Prime transformation. This is to get this on in. It just feels like it takes a little extra work. Not that hard. But definitely feels like the one place where you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing I guess the way to say it. So fold them on in. And I'm noticing all this silver paint that's bleeding through here. I can't remember if my Takara one had that and I just maybe never noticed it. Close the front of the truck on up. Close all this stuff like so. And basically a lot of the stuff to uh, bring these arms on in all the way is held together by these chrome bits like acting kind of like locks and you can still see that there's still something wrong here something that keeps the uh, front here from closing properly I'm not sure why but I didn't have any problems getting him into his truck mode with his gun here this did pop open a couple times but not a big deal finally take these gas canisters or air brake canisters or Whatever they are, if you are a trucker, enlighten me. Fold them on forward here. And there you go, you've got them in this truck mode. Of course, if you are like me, you probably ended up forgetting to pop out his mirrors and push down his smokestacks. I said push down his smokestacks. There we go, I wanted to fight. So there you go, he's in his truck mode. Man, that really bothers me. Uh, that really bothers the heck out of me. It's such a stupid little thing to be bothered by, but that drives me up the wall. Anyway, we'll take him and we'll take his trailer here. And we'll plug it on in. And there you go. An excellent looking Optimus Prime still. Um, except for that piece of the truck. So, yeah, it rolls really nice. Um, pretty good range of motion on the cab on the trailer. You're limited by his little crotch piece here, but it's a pretty good range of motion on there. And yeah, he looks great. Let me just see here. I'm curious. So, taking a look at the uh, Takara version, actually, the silver on this part is actually carried out through the entirety 
of this. So that's why this looks different and I didn't notice it. So in his truck mode, well, hang on. So I realized I'm trying to explain the differences when I could just transform him. And that kind of shows the differences there. Uh, I was trying to get across that the silver paint continues on this part, which makes him look a little bit more complete. Um, whereas this one kind of just looks like sloppy paintwork. In fact, I noticed that this part of the truck that is silver actually is red <laughs> on this prime and all the uh, silver stuff or all the red stuff is silver so there is still some really nice looking things about the Takara version not to mention that the top sits pretty good I mean there's a little bit of a gap but it's not nearly as noticeable as that I suppose I still have to show that you can still open him up here and you can still take his spike and fit him in the top of the truck and he can be driving with a horrible crack in the windshield <sighs> why does it bother me so much I don't know anyway guys this is T2RX6 I hope you guys enjoyed the review I'll see you next week